Okay, my friends, my friends, thank you for being here today for Illustration Masterclass. I am your host, Kyle T. Webster. And uh, some of you may have seen that I posted a painting I did of Michelle Yeoh from Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. I've been a fan of hers since I was in high school watching Supercop way back. And uh, of course, Crouching Tiger and all the rest. Um, so yeah, cool. Great job, K. Hoi Kwan. I'm going to be illustrating a little painting of him today in Photoshop using the same technique I did for Michelle Yeoh. Got some questions about how that was painted. Now that was a four hour painting. We only have an hour together. So I'm going to try as best I can to condense that process down a little bit and see if we get to something semi-finished today in Photoshop. Um, of course, using brushes and using some very fundamental drawing techniques for portraiture, for drawing heads, and for drawing pretty much anything. All right, so um, let's say hi to some folks. Afroha, Cody, and Judith. Hello, and Gareth, and Gary, and Rimsha, and Mandeep, and Steve. Hello, hope you're uh, having a lovely day. These folks are joining me on Behance. Behance.net, B-E-H-A-N-C-E. -E. Or you could just go to B E. Dot net so easy to be or not to be be.net slash adobe live okay if you're watching on youtube thank you nice to see you as well following the chat though over here on behance predominantly okay so that's where the party is come on over and over to photoshop here i've got my photo references you can see right here um and i'm going to be drawing in this spot here and i've got this uh, uh zoomed out a little bit because what i like to do when i do a portrait is i like to zoom out a bit in the same way that i would if i were working on paper with charcoal okay i would not be getting my face right up against the paper and working on little details no sorry bob i'd be stepping back using my whole arm the distance of my arm okay and measuring and laying in the largest and medium-sized shapes first to try and get all my proportions correct, my angles correct, and just work that way. I do the same thing digitally, okay? So I'm not gonna start in here, right, and start drawing an eye or something like that. No, that is not the way I wanna do it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab a simple larger brush to try and work out some of these shapes, okay? So I'm going to open up the Mega Pack. Okay, oh, by the way, there's a little preview of some of the spring 2023 brushes for you brush fans out there. Coming soon, coming soon. Uh, let's open up the paint box and let's go into our oils. We're gonna go to paint box and come on down. We have a whole bunch of brushes here. Pardon me, I'm going to use uh, for now. Um, let's see here, lots of choices. Let's see, let's see. Um, I think I might just, let's try this oil soft edge and see how that, how that feels. That's pretty nice, that'll do the trick for now. Alrighty, let's do it. So I'm gonna use, this is, as you can see, it's a bit of a bigger brush, okay? And what's nice about that is I can't get too precious with anything. All I can do is try and work out some big stuff here. Now, uh, what I wanna do is I wanna put the head about, about here, okay? So here we go, about in this kind of area, okay? And then I wanna have that line right there of the shoulder just kinda of coming down. Uh, this way. So you got this nice sort of rhythm from that shoulder right up into the face. See how this line right here carries up like that? So I try and look for those kinds of rhythms. So that's kind of a nice thing there. And then it kind of cuts across uh, for that hairline there. And the face is going to sit in here like so. Okay, so that's kind of what we're dealing with with that shape. And I look for that center line right there. Okay, it's a little bit of a three quarter view, right? Barely, barely. So most of the space here, just a little less visible of the face as there is, as there is on the on the left. So the right side, a little more compressed, a little more open on the left. All right. So looking at that again, it's a nice rhythm we've got going on there, and that's just kind of going to fade into whatever down there. I'm not going to worry about what happens down there, but this is going to be dark. We're going to have a nice. This is nice right here. We get this sort of a V where we go up and over. Okay. See that with light. Like light area, light area, surrounded by a lot of darks. Okay, and so I wanna keep that in mind right here from the get-go. Uh, there's that tie, okay, kind of lining up with that center right there. Um, and there's that knot of that tie right about there. And if you notice, I can do some alignment right off the, right off the bat there. If I were to come straight on up from there, okay, from here straight on up, I'm gonna hit that side of the nostril right there. See that, see how that lines up? So it's good for me to have that little landmark just so I kind of know it's there, 
okay? So I just make a little mark there indicating for myself that I know that's what that shape is, okay? Um, and I can also do other things, like if I'm coming up from there, I can say, oh cool, I'm gonna hit the center of that upper lip right there as well, right? I could even do something like this. I could throw a little line in to represent the line of the mouth at an angle, try to match that angle, okay? Um, now I know if I'm working digitally, if I, if I wanted to, I could just take this whole photo and just slam it over here and trace over it. But that isn't the point of this exercise. We're trying to get better at drawing. We're trying to get better at, at um, lining things up and, and uh, working with these techniques, right, that are so important uh, if you're working either digitally or traditionally. Okay, and so this is a, this is a priority for me. I want to still stick with, you know, doing this kind of this kind of thing when I work. Okay, importante. Boom, boom, boom. Look at that. See how that lines up right there. And if I drop straight on down, I'm going to hit the corner of that that tie right there. So just trying to just trying to really figure that stuff out early, early on, trying to measure right measure 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 this is over the center of the nose right here I get that little gap one and two and over we go and down we go okay now let's see how we're feeling here feeling pretty good this looks pretty good this comes on over we go up around the head here we go off to the side like this and down and then down this away, out a little bit for the cheek. So now I'm thinking a bit more about that silhouette now. See that? Okay, getting a little bit more specific, a little bit more specific as we go through here. All right, and there's that lower lip right there. Okay, so pretty, pretty basic. I'm not trying to get too heavy with any details or anything here. We're just trying to get these bigger shapes to make sense up and over. And if we just look now from that eye right here, I can kind of cut straight across here, all right? And there's an ear, okay? Right there, see the top of the ear there, right there. There's even this nice rhythm here you can see from the jaw right on up to the ear. That kind of helps me place that fairly accurately right there, okay? And down we go. This whole area is just dark, okay? And there's a bit of a lighter shape here on the neck. Right there. There's the collar and there's that, that tie. And that comes on down this way. And we open it up that way over here. And down to that shoulder. Just looking for a line there for how to sort of get that to feel like it's in the right spot. Um, more kind of like here. And uh, down we go. Okay. All right. Da, 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 da. We're doing that again. We're just tracing that down. And it's too dark even here for me to really see. All right. And so that's fine. I can just, I, what I can do is I can do this. I can just knock all this in and say, okay, that's a dark shape. That's a dark shape. I can hold down my tilde key and I can erase bits and pieces here and there where I need to if I want to like get rid of some of this alignment stuff I've been doing. If it's getting in the way of me seeing some stuff, I can just kind of knock it back a little bit. Okay, it's helpful to do this. Look at that total distance, you know, don't make it too big there. Make sure I get that kind of accurate there. Cut back a little bit this way. And yeah, this is looking okay. This is looking okay for now. So come down here. Looks like the hair just kind of creates a shape back there. Okay, and just kind of cuts off right about there. And kind of blend down into the neck. And then you've got that, that collar. This is a nice shape here. We go one, two, three, four, and over. See that? Nice bright shape in a sea of dark right there, okay? All right, now let's go ahead and let's erase away some bits here. I can 
can get a bit more specific with that mouth there, just to try and get that to feel a little closer to what's there in the photo reference. Coming down for that chin there. Notice I'm still I'm still working at a distance. See how far away I am here? I've zoomed out quite a bit. Not getting in there super nitty gritty. Not yet, not yet. Okay, still trying to kind of from a distance feel my way through all this from a distance. Okay, that's my goal here. And that eye shape right there and this eye shape, they're really kind of just basic, sort of um, round shapes at the top, like they're stretched out like ovals, and then pretty flat across the bottom. Notice that, see like a, a straight line right there. So here if I want to, I could zoom in a bit, and just to get specific now and make sure that I get a lot of this to feel you know, closer to the reference, I can knock some of this out right here and try and get a little closer to what I actually see here because as you know the the eyes are a huge part of making something look correct okay when it comes to likenesses you gotta try and see if you can nail the eyes okay all right, now here I look at this. I look at this shape right here. See that it's like a one. It's like a W or an M M uh, M. Like so. That's that shadow shape right there. Okay. And here we go with another letter M. Okay, M. And up and over. All right. And here's that little shadow right there. And if I want to be really accurate, I can. Make sure and do this. See how quickly we're getting to a place where we can start to refine. Okay, we work we work big to small, just like and if you go back and watch my illustration masterclass on that exact topic, okay, working big to small, you'll find a, an episode about that. Um, from about maybe six months ago, maybe a year ago. I honestly can't remember. Do so many of these, right? There's there are hundreds of hours of master classes from myself and uh, the other members of the evangelism team here at Adobe. Make sure you check those out. They're free. They're on YouTube. They're on Behance, and you can just pour over those to your heart's content. So much information shared. So much information. Uh, and now you see I'm just kind of working through here some of these, I would call them mid-tones, I guess, okay? These middle values. All right. And now back again on this, uh, this section right here, I just want to make sure this, this uh, angle is accurate coming across here. And then we go up. And we can't see what's happening under the glasses there, so I'm just going to only paint what I can see. I can see a dark shape here. Um, and... Let's come back over here and look at this mouth a little more closely. Now, this is the benefit of having uh, two reference photos, is I can pull this on up and I can study that shape right there, okay? And I can see if I can get a little closer to exactly what's happening there. All right, so looking over here, I'm gonna have it go up. So, and that angle isn't quite as extreme as what I've got there. Then out this way. All right. A 
can lighten that up a bit. And up we go here. Okay, and we're going to do this. We're going to do a little bit of a straight across right there. Okay. We need a bit more space for that lower lip for sure. Make sure we get that in there. Don't see much of the the space there between the nose and and the lips right here not like a super pronounced shadow or anything like that right so you want to make sure we stay pretty true to what's there with that that's the same thing I did more or less with the uh, Michelle Yeoh was I just kind of working out a drawing okay with the Michelle Yeoh one, I was, you know, I had more time, so I was, I was using a smaller um, pencil to sketch a lot of those shapes in early on. Um, but since we are pressed for time, you know, I'm, I'm changing it up here so that I, I can keep things as simple as possible with a larger tool right here. Okay. All right, now what we need to do is we need to get those glasses in there. Now, why do you think I left the glasses for so late in the process? What do you think was the reason for that? Anybody want to tell me what's going on here in the chat? Let me know what you think. Why would I do that? Paul, how's it going? Thanks for hanging out. Paul Tranny. Paul Tranny in the house. Paul Tranny. Worldwide Principal Design Evangelist for Adobe. Great artist in his own right as well. And, yeah, speaking of master classes, Paul's got master classes every Friday. Hope you're watching them. Hope you're watching. Um, yeah, so let's see. Why did I leave the glasses? Let's see. Let's see. Anybody have any questions? Anybody have any questions about the glasses? Why? Why did I leave them for so long? Surely somebody there knows the reason. All right. Well, I'll tell you. So the glasses are a distraction from the structure of the head. You want to get the structure of the head correct okay all the big stuff you want to get that big stuff working before you go paying attention to things that are decorative okay that are not part of the head but are sort of added later they are decorative elements they are surface dressing if you will okay super important not to let those kinds of things get in the way of your understanding of the larger uh the larger stuff the larger info okay this is the reason this is the reason and that is why it was left alone okay for later 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 there's your answer all right gang all right hope that makes sense and uh if not just uh, let me know but yeah there's there's a reason for everything okay that we do here it's all it's a formula you know this all this kind of stuff that we do um it's a formula for success that's tried and true right i wouldn't steer you wrong I'm trying to help you all find ways to work that are consistently reliable that's the goal here okay this is not to say that there's only one way to do things we know that isn't true okay but it is to say that there are ways to do things that have been proven to be pretty darn effective time and time again. So, with that being the case, um, why wouldn't you, hey, take advantage, right? People have 
figured these things out, okay, long before I came along and um, long before you came along. And they've, they've figured them out and they're trying to help us get to a place where, you know, they've done the work to find the most efficient and reliable ways to produce decent results. So why don't we just take advantage? All right, um, look at those little highlights right there. Shing, there they are, right across there. Ding dong 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 dong, we just go right through. All right, that's gonna be a nice thing to play with later. Right there is another one. Here we go, bang, 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 right through. All right, how are we doing? Is this all starting to kind of come together here? Are we starting to get something that feels kind of right? You tell me, you tell me. What do you think? How are we doing? All right, now, I do believe there's enough kind of decent structure there. Um, kind of want to take uh, this area here. I'm just looking at my alignment there and I just kind of want to do this. Okay, just to make sure that things kind of work correctly there. Um, and I also want to um, take this eye and just do this. Duck, duck. A little bit of that. It's a slight adjustment, um, but I think it'll make a world of difference down the road. All right, so let's do a quick time check. Let's see where we are. We are now at 2.53. So we've been drawing for about 20 minutes, okay? Um, and we are at a place where we could start thinking about uh, some color and some other stuff. I still haven't touched those glasses. You notice they're still not even not even in the in the discussion here Okay um, But the time has come maybe to to consider them and think about maybe working them in uh, one quick thing I want to do um, And this is a good practice for everybody is To do a little flipper here. Okay, so before I do that, I'm just gonna look at this nose shape here and get a little bit a little bit more accurate there with how that's how that's working right there. So we're gonna do this. We're gonna do every time you see me erasing a little bit, I'm just holding down the tilde key, because I'm on a North American keyboard. Now for those of you who do not have a North American keyboard, you can simply use the eraser. Okay, set the eraser to be something soft. It gives you a little bit of control with the pen pressure so that you can use pressure to affect opacity. Okay, um, but those of you who do have a North American keyboard, if you use that tilde key, which looks like this on your keyboard, is this little guy, right? Top left corner. If you use that, um, you're just gonna use the same brush you're painting with as an eraser, which is a huge convenience, let's be honest. Okay. Okay, so I'm just getting picky here with that nose shape. Getting picky. It's good to be picky. Getting a little picky with that mouth right there. And up and over. All right, probably time for me to, to make some strides forward since we are, again, we don't have a lot of time together. I realize that, we don't have a lot of time. Okay, so we're gonna try and move things along a little bit. Okay. Glasses, are you ready? Here we go. I'm gonna make a new layer just to be on the safe side. Now this shape is really specific, okay? And believe it or not, because this photo, of all the photos you could have of the actor, it's not the most 
recognizable. I mean, it is him, but there's something about the angle and the lighting that makes it not super recognizable. So in a lot of ways, these glasses are gonna play an important role in helping us to pinpoint uh, who this is. Okay, so this is, this is an important thing. So you see, I just, I'm darkening this shape right now. Um, I locked the layer transparency by just tapping on my, my backslash, or is that forward slash? The, the, the slash that's under the question mark on the keyboard. I can never remember which one's which. I think it's forward slash. Um, I wanna get the shape of these glasses just right, as well as the size, so that they really fall exactly where they should on the face. Okay, so thinner here, and then up we go and around. Try and get that just right. Because yeah, this is this is an important part of of the likeness now. Okay, so we, we got the structure of the head fairly well worked out, didn't we? That was that part feels pretty nice now. I feel pretty good about that. Okay, so now we move on to the glasses and they are an important shape. So we got to get that right. Remember that this line is going to carry straight across, right? See this? Think about the fact that we're looking at the head at an angle. We want to make sure that this lines up here, okay? So we know the bottom of the glasses are going to sit there. We can also see that for the face, see this right here, this line, okay, right here on the side of the head, okay, that the glasses are going to just loop out right there and leave us some nice, some nice um, empty space right there. So that's going to help us with proportion. We can see that happening very clearly. Okay, so we come around and up. I'm just trying to mark exactly where things intersect with others. So up we go and over and around. Up and over, gotta get that angle just right. Take your time with this stuff. This is the stuff that really matters. You don't wanna rush this kind of thing, okay? You will pay the price. Later, when you're looking at it and something feels wonky or out of proportion or like the angle isn't quite there, um, this is the reason. It's because you, you can't rush this stuff, okay? See how that carries out here? And then down we go this way, right here. Just like that. And cut that off a little bit. We come in, we go down. All right, that's pretty good. Let's see how we're feeling here for the this section right here. Good, good, good. All right, feels about right. This dips just a bit more. It's a little thinner right here. A little thinner right here. Need a bit more space here. Come on down a little ways. Make sure that feels about right there. And for those of you watching, if you're thinking, poof, this is taking a while. This is boring. Well, I got news for you. This is the kind of stuff that if you do not pay attention and don't take the time to get it right, makes a world of difference between a pretty good painting Okay, that feels like your subject and a really 
really accurate painting that people respond to and say, hey, I like that, That's that looks right. Something about that just feels right. All right. So now, using that same dark color, I'm just coming around here, trying to get this a bit more accurate here. That, that dark shape blends into the upper eyelid, the shape, the dark color and shape of the, the iris there. See that? It's all just one shape. Okay, so you kind of want to just acknowledge that and, and go with it. And there's a little shadow there. Same over here, dark shape. You see a little bit of the white of the eye there. And then we have this nice long dark shape here. A little shadow there and we cut out this way okay and we can refine that just a hair Okay, now is the time where I take the whole thing and I position it the way I would want it to, to be in the in the frame. Like if this is my, my frame right here, where do I want everything to sit so the scale is, is pleasing, right? That's kind of like, I think that's about right. Okay. And I'm gonna combine those layers. Okay, so that's one layer now. The glasses, the little dark uh, elements and accents and so on. Um, and now I can do some alignment stuff. I can look over here and over here and I can say, ah, take all this, okay, and just shimmy it on over and up a bit, like so. Make sure my alignment's good, okay. Make sure that little things like that little bump right there, we come down, we have a little bump right there, that that's clear and obvious. Okay, that has a lot to do with the character of his mouth. You know what I mean? Like that's, a, that's an important little thing right there that we, we have to make sure we acknowledge. Okay, it all kind of goes to show uh, the unique traits of his facial features. Okay, makes him look like who he is. Important. All right, there we go. <coughs> Excuse me. And we can get a little bit more specific now here. So we've got some, some hair out here. Okay, that shape just carries around. When we get to the glasses, it cuts back down in here. So we just go in this way. All right, now the glasses kind of frame that edge so I can just cut out some of that and cut in this way. We come straight on down to where that cheekbone is, okay? And that's coming out this way and out here. We go this way. Just wanna make sure I get this shape right and we come down. Look at the amount of space we have here. Okay, we don't wanna go overboard there. We don't wanna mess that up. Keep that tight. Come around and down we go right here.
And then all this business here, see that ear right there? You can just sort of we'll make sure those are lined up right there. Just show a little bit of that ear. And then here, I gotta trim all that away. and Just kinda make sure that all makes sense, okay? Getting specific, getting specific. Collar pops right here. And then there's a nice little sliver of it right there. This is all dark. All right, this is light right here when that shape changes. Now we don't have to be super accurate with how that changes. We can, we can do this, we can simplify that curve like that. That might be more interesting as a design. Okay, so we have straight edge, straight edge, curve. And those of you who do character design know the rule about, you know, and I say rule, I use that word loosely whenever I say that, okay, but this idea of, you know, straight edge, straight edge, curve, right? Uno dos. So we got curve. And this is a, this is a curve too. So we got a curve and a curve. We could we can make that straighter if we want. Okay. Do you see I'm getting a little darker now? We're going darker here. Not quite that dark, sorry, I'll go a little lighter than that. But if you're looking at the the reference, okay, there are specific areas that are just pure dark goodness. Okay, so like here. These are dark shapes. And using a brush like this, okay, this this oil soft brush really makes it easy for me to, to just gently massage my way through darkening these areas, you know? It can be a delicate process. And I can let these bigger dark shapes just kind of blend in with each other. Okay, see? All right, time check. I've got about 18 minutes left. So in that time, my goals are as follows. I want to get some dark darks in. Okay, dark darks. Um, and some light lights. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do here. So dark darks, I'm gonna go ahead and save just in case. It's interesting, I've never seen that happen before. Save to cloud documents, this doesn't seem to wanna to let me do that. That makes me a little nervous, okay. All right, moving on. Um, Dark darks, so here's a nice shape right here. Boom, boom, dark, straight down and then up. There's a dark, dark shape. Got a medium right above it where that transition from light to dark happens. There's a bit of reflected light. You see that green there and then that sort of orangey red on the right side, okay? Two different light situations being reflected there into the nose. And that's the fun stuff you get to later, which is is color. Playing with color and getting all that sorted. You know what I mean? You may have a little bit of time for that today. We will see, okay? Let's see what happens. Gonna pause for a moment just to look at the 
chat and see if anybody has any specific questions so that I can be helpful and answer them for you. So let's do that. Questions. Kyle makes it look easy, not boring. <laughs> I'm glad it's not boring. Thank goodness. When something is off, says Paul, what is the process you take in correcting it? Great question. Um, the answer is uh, measuring. So um, I'll look at the, the reference, and what I do is I drop verticals and pull horizontals, which means I do this. I drop things that are, I drop vertical lines, okay? It means I draw literally vertical lines, okay? And I, when I'm doing this with traditional media, I draw them directly on my drawing, and I, I look with by holding up my pencil in a vertical to the subject, to the to the line of the, the subject, and I look and see what aligns with what. So the inside of the eye here aligns with the outside of the nose, more or less. See that? I want to check myself right here. Yep, good. Um, and I can look at the uh, things like a horizontal, same way, right? What, what lines up with what, if anything, okay? Or I can do things like this. I can pull across and then pull down, like a triangle. And so this is sort of an angle I can get right here. I can say, what's the amount of space if I go straight up and over to try and triangulate where things are located? All right, that's another trick. Um, you can also do what I did at the very beginning of the drawing, which is where I went like this. I said, look, this, right, line of the, of the hairline into the, the face right there, right into the collar, and right on down into the shoulder. Right, that whole long passage, you look for long passages that are both connected and disconnected, right? Um, that you can, where you can connect things. Like the bottom of the ear here, if I kind of pull a curve like that, I can sort of line that up, you know, right here. That kind of thing. Except in, in my drawing right here, I realized that, you know, kind of moved that around. So in reality, this whole area, if I wanted to be super picky and get all this stuff worked out, should in fact be whoops should be right about um about here shouldn't it right if we're if we're going to get picky that's where that should be that's where that should be um with the exception of of this this shape right here that should be more like this okay um but yeah if i wanted to get accurate with that line right there okay um stuff like that that's that's how i correct things as i measure um, based on what's in the reference, and I use verticals and I use horizontals, I literally draw lines to make stuff uh, match up and feel like it's in the right spot. And that's the answer to that question. So I hope that makes sense. Um, and this applies to everything, digital, traditional, any topic, if I'm drawing an elephant or if I'm drawing a person, same process any way you slice it. Slice it lean, slice it fat, still got to measure. Okay. But you can see like how things are lining up. They look pretty accurate. You know, there are always going to be things you could make slight modifications to um, as you go. And as as you, um, when you have more time than what we have today, of course, you can get a lot pickier with this stuff. On the other hand, there's something fun about giving yourself constraints and saying, "All right, I'm going to do a." Uh, a painting in two hours like if you give yourself two hours and say this is what I have I got two hours how am I going to spend my time like what are the decisions I'm gonna make where am I gonna let things go and then move on um, these are good constraints to put on yourself as well so that you focus on what really matters you know so for, for something like this you know I do want there to be a general likeness right but it's not gonna be perfect um, but there's enough there to where I'm, I'm kind of, I'm getting close enough to what it is that the subject, uh, my subject looks like, you know. Um, and at this phase, you know, I, I'm ready. I'm just going to do this. I can say, all right, here we go. I'm going to go dark. 
And I'm just going to take this whole section right here and pull that collar up right there. And if I say, okay, I want to do some color stuff, then I can start thinking about that. I can I can say, all right, we're gonna we're gonna go for it. Okay. And we're gonna we're gonna knock that green in right there. And that's gonna be a shape, and there's gonna be that yellow bit right there. Um, but I can just start doing stuff like this. I can just get bold. Working on the same layer. I'm not even making a new layer or anything. I'm just drawing on the same layer. I'm gonna cool this off a bit. Okay, say, okay, here we go. It's gonna blend right into the tie. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit that with that yellow in a moment just to get that going. And just get, get really, uh, really down and dirty here with these darks. Just go bam. Knock that in, knock that in. Uh, knock this in right here. Bring that up right into the hair. Right into the neck. And then even have that carry through into the background. And I can make choices here. I can make artistic choices where, you know, I can design some shapes the background that I think are interesting. Like if I want this kind of thing to carry through, right? I can do stuff like this. I can have a different uh, different brush, something that's got a bit more of a bristle kind of a look to it. Or I can pull some lines. I'll show you what I mean here in a sec. Let me just get a couple things worked out here. Make sure you make sound effects. If you don't, you're doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong. Come around here. You notice I'm not sampling color from here. Why am I not sampling color from my source? Anybody know why I'm not doing that? Anybody has the answer to that question? I'd love to know why you think I'm not doing that. It'd be so easy, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it make my life easier if I did that? What do you think? Why not just do that? Wouldn't it be so much easier? Surely somebody must have a theory, an idea. Why would Kyle make life difficult on himself? Why would he not take advantage of the ability to sample color directly from, from the document? Giving yourself a time limit is actually very helpful. Yeah, Cody, it totally is. Got a got a pretty strict one today, don't we? Pretty strict time limit today. I'm bumping up against that time limit with every passing second. But we have made some progress and things look pretty decent. So it's, you know, it's not a it's certainly not a wasted effort, I'll tell you that. It would be a different palette than what you're working with. Well, that's certainly part of it, uh, Peg. It'll look too much like a photo. It's cheating, says Steve. Yeah, you know, Cody, um, CMYK. So all the, those are good answers. The reason is I want to train myself as an artist to look at something and then make intelligent choices based on what I observe um, and try and, and make it work for myself without resorting to just sampling the color directly from the photo reference. Because if I were painting 
with real paint. I couldn't walk up to my subject with a magic wand. Um, I mean, with a an eyedropper tool, could I? That just doesn't that doesn't happen. So um, I don't want to do that. I wanna I want to try and figure it out, and I want to make those choices here on the canvas like I would with real paint. That's exactly the reason. That's why I do it. To me, that's way more fun. Nice to have that challenge. It trains me to see things. I want to see things clearly. I want to see things better. And the only way to do that is to do it and just see what happens. So anyway, that's my answer. You know, I encourage you all to give it a try. See how you like it. Okay, well, we're bumping up against time. Got about four minutes left. So what can we do in four minutes? So I mentioned a design thing here. So let me just quickly make this shape right here. Boom, boom. Just pull that down. All right, we'll let that do its thing. Um, and then over here, I'm gonna just throw in that little section right there. Let that do its thing. Okay, cool that down. And we're gonna do a bit of that action. And then carry up into there. So whatever choices I make here don't have to be exactly what is observed. Like I said before, I can make design decisions. I can say, this is a shape I like, so I'll paint that shape. It's still generally what's there, okay? But it's not gonna be identical. And the reason for that is I want to make interesting shapes. Okay, that's all part of what painting is, right? Not making things look 100% photorealistic, because then why not just take a photo, right? Why not just take a photo? All right, so um, right here where there's this line that goes up that way, okay? This is where I can do stuff like this. I can just go ahead and right here, go like that. Just grab that whole area, okay? And I can paint that as a sort of a, a continuation of that shape right there. And then I could change the tint of this slightly, right? So that there's more maybe a contrast. This is a brown. If I want to go from here, I can bounce across to the blue, right? Try something like that. Have those kind of do their thing, okay? But I can start to then do fun things like that, okay? Start, and this doesn't have to be this saturated, right? Or it could be lighter. We don't know. Like there's all kinds of stuff you can try here. But the main thing is I want that separation there where that line continues that line in the design, okay? If that makes sense. So the design here, I wanna use that to my advantage. In the same way that there's a line here coming down this way, right? Or there's a line uh, maybe coming across the face like this. If I were to design it so that up here, right? I make sure that I continue that line of action maybe up here so when someone's looking at the painting from a distance they'll see that continuation be like oh cool they might not even notice what's happening they might not see that happening so clearly okay but it's there it's intentional okay and it all has a purpose all right so those are those are design choices you can make for the background where you design the background to have some energy and some shapes and things like that that complement and work with what you're doing uh, with your subject, okay? Um, so I hope this has been really, really helpful for everybody. I hope you've learned some stuff watching 
And, um, you know, of course, if we had more time, we would do more work. But um, as things stand, I think we got pretty far. And you see, even just a little pop of color like this goes a long way, right? As I start to kind of bring that in and start to work in on, on all that stuff right there, just gently. See what that starts to do? So, hey, thanks for joining me. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Remember to be kind. And I'll say ciao for now.